Uh, I do a weekly show with Don Morocco. He's told me a couple of stories about your uncle, the Sheik. And oh, yeah. um, I, I suppose, really, were you terrified as a kid of your uncle at the time? Or did you, or was he always, you know, he wasn't the Sheik to you? Um, I wasn't terrified. Of him. I respected him. Like, uh, I, I didn't act up, act up around him. And I always was, uh, you know, on my P's and Q's when I was around him. But, uh, you know, I was a bastard when I wasn't around him. I was, I was a wild kid. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I, I was afraid of him. I, I just respected him. I, you know, I, I wasn't afraid of him. Who was uh, some of the wrestlers? So I imagine you know wrestlers going around to each other's houses. You must have met a few. Uh, who who uh, stick out in your mind? Well, my uncle would have uh, dinner every Sunday at his house, and the wrestlers would come by there, and uh, he'd have the heels in one room and the baby faces in the other room where they didn't talk to each other. And uh, you know, I met Bobo Brazil. I met Andy the Giant. I met Abdul the Butcher, Terry Funk. Um, I met a hundred guys. Yeah. I remember, I, I'm sure I read somewhere that you shook Andre the Giant's hand as a kid, man. I mean, how how much that must be burned into your memory? Yeah, I didn't shake his hand. I, I, was, I was scared of him because he was so big and I didn't know him. I wasn't scared of my uncle because he was my uncle. I knew he was my uncle. I knew he wasn't going to hurt me. Mm. These other guys, I didn't, I thought they might hurt me because they didn't like my uncle, but I, I didn't know it was worth then. Yeah. Did you, um, did you ever actually live in Detroit for any portion of your life as a kid? No, we, we lived in Lansing, Michigan. My uncle lived in Williamson, Michigan. It's about 30 miles, about 80 miles from uh, Detroit. We, we never lived in Detroit. Got you. Uh, so I'll, I'll ask about Detroit uh, in a couple of questions time, but uh, this is something I genuinely don't know. And uh, who were the Sheik's influences as far as developing his character? And who did he look up to uh, who came before him? Uh, I, I don't know. He never told me. I never asked him. I, I don't know. Uh, uh, a guy named Bert Ruby trained him and named him the Sheik of Araby. But before that, he was called the Black Knight. And before that, he was, I think, just Ed Farhat. But uh, he went through a couple gimmicks, but then uh, the Sheik of Araby stuck with him. And uh, that was that. Yeah. Of all the Sheik copycats afterwards, who do you reckon was the best and who do you reckon uh, was just a, a lazy was the they, they, were, they, they were all the shits. King Curtis was pretty good. But uh, the Iron Sheik, you know, I like the Iron Sheik. He's a nice guy, but I think he's a terrible worker. You know, I, w I would never tell him that, but I don't think he's a good Sheik. He he's a bad Sheik. <laughs> but uh, he's a nice guy. I like him. My uncle liked him too. But, you know, uh, um, there, there is no good Sheik imitators. There, none of them are as good as him. Didn't your uncle actually, um, well, the story goes, that he bestowed the Sheik name and gave uh, Iron Sheik some boots to send him on his way and basically gave him no. his blessing? No, that didn't. That didn't happen. Oh. <laughs> no, no. Is that just something no. Sheiky just came up with to make it plausible? He, he must have. Yeah, he made it up. That didn't ever happen. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Um, I know you wrestled this fellow. I don't know if you tag, uh, tagged with him, faced him, and so. But Tiger Jeet Singh was he or was he just the direct ripoff of direct ripoffs of your uncle? He is a direct ripoff of my uncle, too, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, how did yeah. you find Tiger to uh, work with an FMW? Because I've read stories, maybe not all of them good, not the most giving. Yeah, uh, he was okay. He, I didn't like working with him too much. He's kind of pushy and, and you know, he was trying to protect himself. And uh, I had to wrestle. He wanted me to, they wanted me to wrestle his son in his very first match in Japan and me lose to him, and I wouldn't do it. Hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to lose a match against some guy's very first match. I don't care who it is. No, no. I mean, how long were you in the business at that point? Like two, three, four years? Ten years. No, oh, I was in the business ten years. Oh, yeah. Jesus, and, right. And, and his son, a uh, nice guy, but he didn't deserve to beat me yet. You know? No, exactly. you got to work your way up, haven't you? Um, were you did you ever see uh, The Sheik in Detroit when it was rocking and rolling, when it was, you know, doing huge business? No, no, no. Uh, see, the, the, he ran a territory where Detroit was one of the stops, Lansing, Muskegon, uh, Bay City. So we only w went to the shows in Lansing, where we live. We didn't ever go to the shows in Detroit. We never went to the shows in Detroit. We, there was no reason for it because we had them in Lansing. Right. So, you, so you've actually never been in Cobo Hall then? I've been to Cobo Hall once when NWA used my uncle, the Sheik and Dusty Rose versus Kevin Sullivan and uh, Dick Murdoch, I think. And uh, that was the only time I was in Cobo Hall. All right. So then, um, I'm trying to think. Actually, well, I mean, I, can you explain this to me then? So, uh, as far as I can tell, and you know, obviously I wasn't born at the time. I'm not the greatest historian in the world. How did Detroit go from doing so well, drawing so many uh, tickets, uh, you know, such a huge gate every single uh, time they went there? And uh, mm -hmm. like two years later, how did it sort of like fall apart so quickly? Uh, because uh, Vince started buying the territories and, and buying the guys to double cross, you know, the, the, buy their loyalty for him. So he, he would double their pay or whatever their pay was. And, and they quit working for my uncle and quit working for other guys, too. You know? 